Okay, this lesson 9.3. Rational and irrational approximation. All right. Determine all the number sets to which the slope of the equation below belongs. That means I have to subtract 3x to both sides. So 2y equals negative 3x minus 6. Because this has to move over here, and it has to go in front of the minus 6. Now I divide everything by 2. y equals negative 3 over 2x minus 3. Now all I have to do is I have to determine the number sets that the slope belongs to. I have to make sure that I um, reduce the fraction. Okay? Now, negative 3 over 2 stays negative 3 over 2. It cannot reduce. It cannot turn into anything else. So the number I'm looking at is negative 3 over 2. Now, it is real because all numbers that we deal with are real. I need, can it be written as a fraction? Yeah, it is a fraction. So if it can be written as a fraction, it's rational. Now, what I need to determine is, is it an integer? No, integers are not fractions. Integers can be written as fractions, but they are not fractions. So that's all it is, real, rational. Which of the following is a finite set? Finite means ends, okay? Whole numbers greater than 12. Whole numbers greater than 12, does that ever end? No, it goes forever and ever. Integers less than 7, does that ever end? No, because integers are negatives and positives and zero. That never ends. Odd numbers, do odd numbers ever end? No, they go forever and ever. Natural numbers less than 100, that's it. Natural are counting numbers, less than 100, they start at 1. So if they're less than 100, they would end at 99. So your answer is D. Okay, please put these in order from least to greatest. This is what we're going to do here. We are going to turn all these numbers into decimals so that we can do this. Now, this is sad. This is so sad. But I have to clarify for some people what least to greatest means. It means from smallest to biggest. Least to greatest means from smallest to, to biggest. If you go from least to greatest with your speed, you're going from your lowest speed to your highest speed. Okay? Sometimes it'll say in increasing order. If you go, if you increase, that's from smaller to higher. If you decrease, that's from higher to lower. So greatest to least would be from biggest to smallest. Least to greatest is from smallest to biggest. Unfortunately, I'm going to also have to teach you how to put decimals from smallest to largest, but we'll deal with that in a second. So here I have 4, 1, negative 2.5. Well, my smallest number is negative 2.5 because negatives are always smaller than positives. Now, the bigger the negative, the smaller the value. Negatives are opposite, but I only have 1. So then I cross it out. And then next I go 1, cross it out, and then I go 4. That's all you're doing. Okay? Now's when we run into problems. Because these are all decimals. So which one is the smallest decimal? Class, which one's the smallest decimal? 3.1, yes. Because after you look at the number to the left of the decimal, and they're all the same, they're all three. You then have to classify them by the number just to the right of the decimal. 6 is larger than 4, which is larger than 3, which is larger than 1. So 1's the smallest, it goes first. 3.3 will go next. 3.4 will go next. And then 3.6 goes last. So this is what I'm doing. When I have decimals, think of it as change. 
This would be three dollars and sixty cents, not six cents. Three dollars and six cents would look like this. Okay. <clears throat> so this is three dollars and sixty cents, three dollars and ten cents, three dollars and forty cents, three dollars and thirty cents. If you think of it like change, you're good. This is what we do. Point one, point two. Point three, what comes next? Point five, point six, point seven, point eight, point nine. What comes after point nine? One point zero. Very good. Okay. It also can go like this. Point zero one, point zero two, point zero three. This is change for point zero five. This is five cents, point zero six. 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.09. What comes after 0 0.09? 0 0.1 or 0 0.10. Either one's the same. See how it goes? This is how decimals go. When you get to 9, then you increase the next column. Okay? When you get to 9. So if I was to go 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, what comes after 0.19? 0 0.20, 20. It's just like counting. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you convert your fractions to decimals. 0.34 is actually point what? 75. Very good. And what is five fourths? One point what? Very good. Real quick fraction lesson. Five fourths. The number on bottom tells you how many pieces are in the puzzle. The number on top tells you how many you own. So here I own five out of four pieces. What? How do you own five out of four pieces? Well, here is a puzzle, and this puzzle has four pieces, right? Well, if I own five, I have to own all four of these, correct? That means I have a second puzzle. And here's another four-piece puzzle. How many of this one do how many of this puzzle do I own? One. One, two, three, four, five. So I own five four-piece puzzles, or I own one entire puzzle and then one fourth of another puzzle. See, I own this whole puzzle right here. This is an improper fraction. This is a mixed number. And they equal each other. Five-fourths, one and one-fourth are the same thing. I own all four of this puzzle. That gives me one whole puzzle. And I own one of the four pieces there. So it's either one and a fourth or five-fourths. Or if I convert it to a decimal, what is one-fourth as a decimal? What is one fourth as a decimal? 0.25, yeah. So it's 1.25. That's my decimal. So now I'm going to put these decimals in order. Do I have any negatives? No. Negatives will always go first. The largest negative will go first. So now, what's smaller, 0.75 or 0 0.6? 0 0.6. This is 60 cents. This is 75 cents. So 0.6 goes first. Then I have 0.75. Now here I have $1.25 and I have $2.10. This is not $2.01. You guys always want to say that. Well, that's $2.01. No, it isn't. There's a zero at the end. This is $2.01 right there. Okay? So, what comes first? $2.10 or $1.25? $1.25 comes first because we're going from smallest to largest. And then $2.10. This is not difficult, is it? I hope not. Now, I have this square root of 7. This is what I'm going to tell you. Get your calculator up and do square root of 7 equals, 
And it tells you square root of 7. Where are you going? Have a seat. You should have got that when you first walked in. It tells you square root of 7. So what button do you have to hit? Hit your SD button. It tells you what? 2.645. So I'm just going to make that 2.6. I'm just going to call it 2.65. One fourth is 0 0.25. Pi, 3.14. Huh? Uh, your notes say 1 over 3? Okay, mine says 1 fourth. That's okay. I can hang with that. Watch this. I'll turn this to a third. Now, 1 third, I know, is 0.33 on, on, forever, and ever. So the first thing, the smallest, is going to be 33 cents, 0.33. Cross that out. Then I'm going to have $2.65. Then I'm going to have $3.14. Then I'm going to have $5. Okay, quickly go get a calculator. Make sure you remember next time. Yes. Okay, now here they want to go from greatest, greatest. From greatest to leastest. So we're going to go from largest. Greatest means largest. We're going to go from biggest to smallest. There should be a comma here. Again, we're going to convert these to decimals. Now, this is negative. Negative square root of 7. So, in my calculator, I go negative square root of 7 equals. Hit my SD button. It gives me negative 2.65. Negative... 4.1, 3 over 2, 3 divided by 2 equals SD 1.5. And then we have 1.5. And then we have 3.14. Okay. So I want the biggest. Which one's the largest? $3.14. Cross that out. Now, what comes next? One dollar and fifty cents. I have two of them. One point five, one point five. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what's larger? Negative two dollars and sixty-five cents or negative four dollars and ten cents? Negative what? Negative two dollars and sixty-five cents is larger than negative four dollars and ten cents. Remember, the larger the negative number, the smaller the value. Okay. Okay. So six, seven, and eight, you should be able to do those, going from largest to smallest. Now, when we get here, we have to put it on a number line. Let's go to number 12. Now, number 12... I guess we could say number 5. I put a comma here in between 1.5 and pi, but I guess that could be mean multiplication. I would have preferred that they did this if they wanted you to multiply it. So, but they didn't here. Let's look at number 12 and let's just assume they want us to multiply 1.5 times pi. So, all I'm going to do with my calculator, I'm just going to go 1.5 times 3.14 that equals 4.71. So I'm going to turn this into 4.71. If there's anything like that on the test, I'll tell you. On this one, you have to multiply those two numbers. So this time, instead of separating those into two different numbers, I just multiplied them. Okay. Now, I need to convert this negative square root of 11 into a decimal. So I go minus square root 11 equals negative 3.31. I'm going to call that negative 3.32 because it's 3.16. 5 over 4, do you remember what 5 over 4 was? 1.25. And then we have 0.7. So now, I'm not going to do this in increasing order. I'm just going to place them on the number line. 
4.71 is over here. It's going to be close to 5. So I put a dot and then I label it 4.71. That one's done. Okay, a very good question was brought up. Um, I want you to round your decimals to the nearest hundredths. So I guess we'll have to talk about that real quick. Okay, so now negative 3.32. Here's negative 3. Now, here's the hard part. 3, 3 and a half, 4. So 0 0.32 is going to be about right here. Negative 3.32. Okay, it is not on this side of my 3. Because this is 2. Two and a half, two and three quarters, three, three and a half, three and three quarters, four. That one's done. 1 1.25. 1 1.25 is about right here. 1.25. And then we have 0 0.7. 0 0.7 will be before one. So then I just go underneath here and I go 0 0.7. And that is how I put my numbers on a number line. Very simple. Okay, so now, let's see what else. Oh, that's it. But I do want to take one last thing. I want to, I want to show you how to round. So, when I did 1.5 times pi, 1.5 times 3.14 equals my answer. Oh, that came up very nice, 4.71. Which one did we have to round? There we go. Negative square root 11 equals... Okay, now, negative square root 11, negative square root 11 equals negative 3.316624479. That's what my calculator gives me. Now, I told you to round to the nearest hundredths. This right here, the second one to the right of the decimal is your hundredths. When you round this, you look at at this spot right here, what comes after hundreds? Tens, hundreds, thousands. You look to the right of what you want to round. If it is five or greater, you round up. If it is four or less, you keep. Okay? So is this number five or greater? Yeah, it's six. So you round the 1 up to 2, so this is negative 3.32. 5 or greater, round up. 4 or less, you would have kept it at 1. That's how you round. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we covered an awful lot. If you have any questions, please feel free to come in and ask. Have a fabulous day.